this is probably one of the questions you've had in the past. Which do you like better, a canine partner or a human partner? Oh, canine partner. <laughs> <laughs> without, without a hesitation, canine partner. And, and with that, what do you and your canine partner like to do in your, on your off time? Uh, we play a lot. We play a lot. Um, the, again, uh, training can be uh, uh, turned into just about anything fun off duty. Like I said, uh, if he's chasing the ball and, uh, and he brings it back to me, there's training again, but it's fun. <laughs> now, um, how has your dog, or do you feel your dog has made you a better person or a better deputy? I have a uh, a written prayer at home that says, uh, Lord, help me to be the person my dog thinks I am. I think that's, that says about it all. <laughs> as far as uh, someone in the public wanting to have a demonstration or have you guys come out and actually uh, do uh, some of these things we're going to see later on the show, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, contact the Sheriff's Office by phone or come by. Uh, there's a lecture demonstration request form that has to be filled out um, and uh, it goes through to uh, the uh, my supervisor who will make sure that there's enough manpower to cover it, and then um, assign someone to the demonstration. Okay, great. Kevin, thanks very much. Appreciate you being here Thank with you. us. Now stay tuned. We're going to be back in just a little bit, and we're going to have some of the canine teams show some of their wares out here in the canine field. And if you'd like somebody to come out uh, from the sheriff's office, especially the canine unit, give us a call at 772-462-3320. That's 772-462-3320. That's the patrol division. So stick with us, don't go away, we'll be right back with some more stuff with the K-9 unit. On June 24, 2004, St. Lucie County Sheriff's K-9 officer Vasco was shot and killed in the line of duty while making his 91st apprehension in just under three years. He is truly missed. for you now is a, a, a short area search. Uh, you'll see uh, our, our bad guy come into the scene and then the, the dog will be tasked to find him. We'll see how he does. Okay. And I see uh, the uh, fellow here we got going out. That's Deputy uh, Jason Cannon. Jason Cannon. Jason Cannon is our, uh, Deputy Jason Cannon is our, uh, our pseudo bad guy today. Um, He's uh, one of our decoys, helps out immensely. Now it doesn't look like he's wearing a whole lot of protective stuff with this dog coming at him. He's got, a, uh, he's got a bite bar sleeve on and then scratch pants. The scratch pants aren't necessarily going to keep a dog from, uh, from uh, uh, putting a hole in him, but the hole won't be that big. <laughs> now I notice you have several different boxes out here. Um, I, I gotta assume you change locations each time. Sure, the, the boxes are actually designed to teach the dog pattern. Um, you'll see the dog, uh, the, the boxes are set up in kind of a, an even pattern. And what you'll do is uh, put a scent article in those boxes, a person, and then uh, take the dog box to box to box, box to box to box, and after so much repetition, the dog will instinctively, when he goes into a search environment, start the way you do. If you do a, a clockwise search or a counterclockwise search, uh, my dog has always done a clockwise search. So if I go into a building after working boxes for so long, my dog will always go to the left and start doing a clockwise search of that building. It just, just teaches them pattern. I think it's kind of interesting now how we're talking about using the canine as a tool. We're now using a deputy as a tool for the yeah. canine. Sure. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, a very, very small percentage of our searches uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, deployments will end in someone actually getting bit. Smart people give up. Uh, but it's an unfortunate liability uh, that we have to train. You have to train the dog uh, to apprehend somebody. Here you see uh, uh, Deputy uh, Sean Masters and his canine partner Bacchus and they're on the search here. You see uh, Bacchus pulling a little hard. That means he's got a little bit of odor. He's got some scent. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's got the bad guy in his nose. He just hasn't seen the bad guy yet. The uh, standard protocol here is that uh, Sean will issue a, uh, a, a verbal warning for the person to come out or he'll get bit. Most smart people will, uh, will give up at that point and then you have the silly people that don't.
as far as the the, the person the person fighting him, this is this is this is where this is what the dog works for. Um, uh, our dogs are, are are predators. They're prey animals. The unfortunate reality of what we do is this dog is here to take the risk, so myself and other deputies don't have to. Uh, that is the uh, that is truly the unfortunate reality. Now, uh, am I going to put my dog into harm's way? Uh, no more than I'd put myself into harm's way. Uh, but they are a tool of the trade. So basically, uh, this is just one of those, another one of those areas where uh, you're trying to prepare them as much as possible and to give them as much realistic uh, response as you can get as far as uh, exactly. Your search of a suspect. Exactly. A very, very, a very, very small percent of our searches will actually end in the dog apprehending somebody. Um, but you have to, you have to train for that. It, it truly because of the li liability involved with a, a dog biting somebody. What Deputy Woods and Willem are demonstrating now is a narcotics training search. These boxes are designed in an up and down fashion, so it teaches the dog pattern. Um, the, what uh, Willem's detecting right now are, is marijuana. Uh, when Willem completes his, his training, he'll be, uh, he'll be trained in uh, all dangerous uh, narcotic odors and his ability to detect them. Good job, Willem. So, Kevin, what do you have for us now? going on behind us right now is uh, is the apprehension phase of the state test. What you're going to have is uh, is a, a, an apprehension, the dog biting the bad guy. A uh, big deal is the handler cannot touch the dog, and the dog is called off on voice only. Uh, then you're going to have an assault, which is handler protection. The handler will go up and do a, a pat down, right. uh, and uh, the, the assailant, the decoy, is going to push off on him in a resisting fashion, and the dog must instinctually go in and protect the handler. No words necessary, to just to push on dad and that's it. Uh, then the, probably the hardest part of the apprehension phase is a recall. This is the dog in full-blown hot pursuit of a decoy and with voice only, uh, the dog is called back to the handler. Very, very tough stuff. Gotcha. Now, uh, I know I always want to be able to call my dog back. I, I've got a, a beagle, a boxer, and a, a, um, a yellow lab and none of them want to recall for anything. Uh, now, I, I can understand the reasons for that from my standpoint would be like, uh, you know, run in front of a car or something of that sort. But what's the real, what's the importance of a recall when it comes to a police dog? Obviously, if you're, if you're sending a dog into a, a runoff environment where he's not controlled by the leash, you want to have the ability to call that dog back if something in the situation changes. Uh, you're going to have uh, the bad guy jumps into a schoolyard full of children. You know, obviously don't want to send your dog into the schoolyard of children, even though all of our dogs would probably run through the schoolyard and want to stop and play or something like that and then continue the pursuit of the bad guy. <laughs> right. 